Desperate times call for desperate measures. Venezuelans struggling with the country's non-existent transportation system are resorting to dangerous and often illegal means of getting around. Two years ago, passenger buses in Venezuela numbered at least 280,000, but have disappeared gradually due to expensive or unavailable parts. Public transportation has become scarce, with 95% of buses, cars and taxis no longer on the road. Instead, residents are relying on over 150,000 unlicensed kennels. This alternative means of transport often takes the form of delivery trucks or vans that standing passengers can cram themselves into. The kennels are so named for their cramped and unsafe conditions, which this year alone has caused 39 deaths and 275 injuries. Residents are well aware of the risks of getting into the kennels, but with a slow-moving government, it's not like they have a choice. You sure do get around. China's new smart trains. A city in China has launched a test run for a futuristic urban transport system that's being called the world's first smart train. Described as a cross between a train, tram, and bus, the autonomous rail rapid transit is a 32-meter electric vehicle that runs at a maximum speed of 70 kilometers per hour. The ART is equipped with sensors to help it read road dimensions as it travels along a virtual track made up of dotted white lines painted on the road. The smart train has three carriages and is capable of carrying up to 300 passengers. The self-driving system uses rubber tires instead of steel wheels and can travel up to 25 kilometers after a 10-minute charge. At the moment, the train traverses a 3.1-kilometer route, traveling through four stations in the city of Zhuzhou in the country's Hunan province. A longer route is being planned, with the transport system aiming to eventually expand to other cities. A full-scale Hyperloop pod model was unveiled on Thursday, giving a glimpse into the future of Dubai transport. Virgin Hyperloop One and Dubai's Road Transport Authority developed a prototype commuter pod for the Hyperloop system, which can travel up to 1,200 kilometers per hour. Pods are divided into two classes, gold, which can seat five passengers, and silver, which seats 14. Travel time from Dubai to Abu Dhabi is currently an hour and a half by car, but will take only 12 minutes via Hyperloop. Initial tests estimate the pod can transport 10,000 people to and from Dubai every hour. To avoid motion sickness from the high speeds, the pods have no windows, but do offer entertainment and information systems in the armrests. Though the project is still under testing, the high-speed transportation system could launch as early as 2020. Dubai to introduce flying drone taxis this summer. Need to go to work, but don't feel like waiting at rush hour? Dubai is set to go all Jetsons this summer by offering flying drone taxis. The Dubai Roads and Transport Authority has announced it will start operating drone taxis in July along predetermined routes. They will be using the Ehang 184 autonomous quad opener electric drone to shuttle people around the city via air. The Ehang 184 drone can carry one passenger with a maximum weight of 220 pounds. The drone can fly 31 miles on one charge at a top speed of 100 miles per hour, although officials said their drones will operate at 62 miles per hour. Passengers will board the drone, buckle into a harness, and select a destination on the touchscreen before taking off. The Ehang drones will be monitored through a central command center on the ground. Musk bids to build Windy City Express pods. Sick of sitting in Chicago traffic day in, day out? Elon Musk may be able to help out with that. Elon Musk's boring company has put in a bid to build an express transit link between O'Hare Airport and downtown Chicago. Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel announced the city would be accepting proposals to build an express service from the airport to downtown last Wednesday. Musk tweeted the announcement, saying the boring company will compete to fund, build and operate a high-speed loop connecting Chicago O'Hare Airport to downtown. The loop would be a system of tunnels underneath the city that would use electric pods rather than a vacuum tube like the Hyperloop concept. The proposed route would be less than 20 miles and would need to take less than 20 minutes. The Boring Company will need to present plans on design, finance, construction, operation and maintenance of the loop system. No taxpayer money will be made available for the project. This six-rotor personal drone would be an awesome way to get around. Ever since the Jetsons, who hasn't dreamed of owning a flying car? That day an electrical vertical takeoff and landing vehicle can replace the gas guzzler in the driveway. 
But what if you just want a zip around the neighborhood? Well, then the Solexa is the whip for you. The Solexa is designed for shorter flights of about 20 minutes. Imagine skipping over traffic on your way to work. Or you and a friend can explore the countryside in a Solexa, which is way cooler than taking an ATV. Its designers also think the police might find the Solexa useful. Cops riding a Solexa could quickly respond to a crime scene and then report back to a command center. Navigation would be automated. Punch in coffee shop and the Solexa is programmed to take you there. The Solexa has a 200 pound payload, a 30 meter height ceiling, and a maximum flying time of about 20 minutes. At this point, the concept is just a concept, much like flying cars that fold into a briefcase. British trains are getting a tech upgrade. One of Britain's biggest rail watchdogs has laid out plans for the future of train travel, opting for more tech to make commuting easy and fuss-free. Ticketing options for the UK rail system are currently limited to paper tickets and credit cards, but that could change in the near future. Passengers may soon be able to open ticket gates using an app and Bluetooth signals on their smartphones. The lack of physical contact with the gate helps reduce delays and gets more people through during busier times. Eventually, the smartphone option could be replaced by biometrics, with fingerprint and iris scans identifying passengers and charging tickets directly to their travel accounts. New seat designs are also in the works for train carriages. One type provides staggered seating for more shoulder space and allows 20 to 30 percent more seats per carriage. Another design has traditional seating that can be converted into an alternative configuration at peak times with tables that unfold into seats for added capacity. The UK rail system will also develop self-regulating trains that can communicate with each other in order to avoid conflicts at junctions. Doing so allows more frequent services and fewer delays. The new plans were unveiled at the Rail Delivery Group's annual conference in Birmingham, with plans for some of the upgrades already underway. Trials for smartphone ticketing will begin this year, and new seat designs could be built into existing trains within a year. 450 million pounds has also been invested to test the new signaling technology for the intelligent trains, 